The governor of New York, Katie Hochul, has awarded 20 million US dollars to 17 community-based organizations that helps those displaced by violence or those trying to escape persecutions. These 17 community-based organizations helps these individuals to gain employment and to adjust to their new homes. As I go through this story, there's a few things you have to understand, right? There's two things that I need you to keep in mind. The first one is Katie Hoko having a Catholic background. She has a Catholic background and her husband, William J. Hoko Jr., has a Jewish background. His parents are immigrants from Poland. Between October 2022 and September 2023, the state of New York welcomed 4,200 refugees and individuals with special immigrant visas. In a recent interview, Governor Holcomb spoke of New York State having a proud history of welcoming refugees with open arms. About 5,000 years ago, the Native Americans arrived at the place we now know as New York. And then in 1624, the Dutch established a colony in New York. Following the Dutch establishing a colony, from 1910 to the 1970s, there was this thing called the Great Migration. And during this Great Migration, about 6 million Southern Blacks relocated from the South to Northern and Western cities. And these cities included New York, Chicago, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. Roughly around the same time, in 1904, the U.S. purchased the Panama Canal from the French. And so they looked towards the Caribbean for workers. Thousands of Caribbean people end up relocating to Panama to help out with the Panama Canal. After the construction of the panel was completed, a large number of the people from the Caribbean ended up relocating to New York. To add to that, from 1941 to 1950, Caribbean people were brought to America to work agriculture. Following World War II in 1945, U.S. company heavily recruited thousands from Jamaica, Bahamas, and Barbados to work critical jobs such as healthcare and agriculture due to labor shortages and to rebuild the economy. I must point out though, it was not a one-sided thing because the Caribbean was also having its economic struggles. So the job opportunities that they got in the US and UK offered an opportunity. So there you have it, a quick rundown of the history of New York when it comes to dealing with immigrants. And that is a very short version of it. There are so many other groups that I did not mention. So the governor spoke about this million dollar investment, basically saying it's not a waste of money and that it will uplift refugee communities and that it represents the state's unwavering commitment to the possibility and promise that the refugees bring to the state. She said that refugees are the most scrutinized and vetted individuals to travel to the United States. Prior to resettling, they undergo numerous security checks by intelligence agencies, including biometric tests, medical screenings, and in-person interviews with U.S. Department of Homeland Security officials. And then to the economy. Refugees living in New York make significant contributions to the state's economy as owners, taxpayers, and consumers, according to a study by the New American Economy. Refugee households earned an estimate of $6.2 billion annually and contribute roughly $2 billion in federal and state local taxes. The local businesses view it as an opportunity to fill vacant positions while supporting the refugee community. All right, so as we go through this community-based organization, I want you to keep in mind what I said earlier, that the governor, Kathy Hoko, has a Catholic background and her husband, Mr. Hoko, has a Jewish background. The first on the list of these 
community-based organization is the Jewish Family Services of Western New York. This community grew out of a number of organizations, but it traces its beginning back to 15 July 1863. From that beginning, it evolved into an organization which provides medical and counseling service, job guidance, and a range of child-related services, functions that are familiar to its current work. This organization received $2.7 million out of the $20 million. The image you see here are presidents from 1952 to 1979. I make sure to utilize the five senses that nature, the creator has given to me, right? And I can see, I can read, I can observe who are the founders, and I can only imagine who would benefit most from the jobs provided here, as well as the services that are provided. Naturally, it would be children and people of Jewish background. And there's nothing wrong with that. Naturally, that is how it is. But we have some people with certain religious mindset, and it is usually in our community. They, for some reason, will not interpret that well. And some people will get pretty upset about that. But there's no need to. That is what they should do naturally. They should take care of their people first. Because I'm pretty sure anyone listening to this will make sure that they take care of their children first. That's just the way it is. The next image you see here is a Russian wedding with Jewish Family Service of Iowa Community. And it was designated as a local resettlement agency by HIAS for resettlement of Soviet Jews in Western New York. So you see, the people who are settled already, they reach out to their homeland. They did not disconnect themselves and consider themselves to be unique. They did not move away and started simply focusing on themselves and their immediate family. It takes a, a higher level of understanding to look beyond just your inner circle. For us to look across the battlefield and realize that, hey, we have a common goal. Let's put our differences aside and make something happen so that those who will come to the country after us will have an easier path than us. And I applaud that and we should take from that. Next on this list, is the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants Incorporation. This committee received $1.78 million. The image you see here was taken in New York back in 1910. At the time, more than three quarters of New York were immigrants or first-generation American. Here you have Edith Terry Bremer. She was known to be a visionary and a catalyst. Ms. Bremer was a young socialist worker and she opened the first international institute in New York City, which provided social and legal services to immigrants, girls, and women. All right, in this next image, you have key figures in this organization meeting with President Eisenhower to form the U.S. Committee for Refugees. And this right here shows the power of unity. When your government see that you are unified and that you are making progress, they have no choice but to answer your phone calls. They have no choice but to want to hear what you have to say. They have no choice but to take whatever comes from your mouth seriously. It creates a different climate. No longer they will approach you as if they are kings and you are the subject. They will look at you as equal or they will look at you as someone who can really shake and move things. And that is what we see here. President Eisenhower realized the power that these people have because they put their minds, they put their resources together. This is higher level thinking. You got to respect that. We can come together and jam all day. We can do Juve mornings, we can do carnivals, we can do sun fests, we can do reggae splash, we can do uh, calypso shows, soca events, but this right here, 
would really make us powerhouses in the Caribbean and the world. We can set example. Because for years, we've been hearing a lot of talk. We've seen a lot of figures, a bunch of YouTube channels. We've seen them talk, 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 talk. It's all about entertainment. Next on the list, we have Albany County Opportunity Incorporation. And this organization will receive $342,000. This one is a government organization. Next on the list, are we going to try to run through this? We have Central New York Catholic Charities of Anondaga County. And they were awarded $4 million. And one thing I want to take away from this image here. You see that they are taking care of your African children. They are taking care of everybody. They're providing jobs for your woman. Right? So this should be something for the man and the woman of the community. Are we cool with other people just taking care of us? How do we get so comfortable in such positions? How can the youth respect us? How can anyone else respect us? Well, we're living in a world where strength is praised. Strength is what gets the respect, not weakness. So, are you trying to tell me that when it comes to stuff like this, in this particular case, when it comes to us as a people, then here's when weakness gets respected, but in everything else is a competition? I don't believe that. These youths are young. And they don't understand what is going on. But as they get older, they will realize who the real vanguards are. They're going to realize who have been taking care of them and their parents. They're going to realize that their elders did not have a vision for them to be free, to have their own sovereignty. They're going to realize that all that happened was that their elders secured a room for them inside of another people's house. They're going to realize that they don't have their own house and that they have to adjust to the rules put forth by other people and they're going to continue to run into issues. As we can see every day, there's always something that pops up and then we get on YouTube and we get upset about it. Oh, this person said this about black people. This person did this to this black man. This person pulled this black woman here. When are we going to learn? That we will not have to deal with that if we have our own. People getting kicked out of a pool. Your type is not welcome in this pool. When are we going to learn? Why not build our own pool? Once we have our own pool, our own house, our own stuff, then nobody can tell us anything. Anyway, next here on the list we have Catholic Charities Community Services Archdiocese of New York and they receive $800,000 and this is an image taken from their website and you got the brother here clapping and and so forth and and this is how it usually looks we have a bunch of folks and then you have one or two brothers uh, sisters and if there was a sister in this image uh, she'll probably be on the other side but outside of that they are providing opportunity for African men, women, boys, and girls, right? They are the head. All right. So the governor spoke about this million dollar investment, basically saying it's not a waste of money and that it will uplift refugee communities and that it represents the state's unwavering commitment to the possibility and promise that the refugees bring to the state. The refugee program does not only help the refugees to settle, it also helps them to get past employment barriers. It helps them with social and cultural adjustment, job searching skills, work experience, and English proficiency. She said that the transitional service are also provided to ensure continued employment and to enhance opportunities for advancement. Next on the list, we have Cambia Incorporation, and they will get $400,000. This image was taken from their website. Again, you know, the melanated woman, she is great for marketing. The little girl, great for marketing. And again, I am not knocking it. They are stepping up to take care of the African boys and girls because the African men and women 
cannot do it, at least to the level that they can. Next on the list, we have Center for Family Life in Sunset Park Incorporation, and they will receive $5.4 million. A little bit about this organization. It was started in 1978 by these two sisters, Mary Paul, Sister Mary Paul, and Sister Geraldine Tobia. These two sisters had an extensive social work and community development experience, and they came to Sunset Park with the belief in dignity of families and the value of living in community. And out of their six-month-long needs assessment came a commitment for sponsorship by St. Christopher's Home and a decision to open the Center for Family Life in Sunset Park and provide intensive family center services. So people from their community realized the passion and talent that these sisters have and they invested in it. Next on the list, we have El Barrios Operation Fightback Incorporation. This organization is located in the Northern Manhattan community of East Harlem and it serves East 96th Street to East 125th, 5th Avenue to East River. El Barrio's Operation Fight Back Center, also known as EBOF, was founded in 1983 out of the struggles of tenants and community residents to secure decent affordable housing for neighborhood families in the context of housing neglect, abandonment, arson, crime, and drug proliferation. Here we have the leaders and board of directors, Torres and Frank Miranda, right, Hispanic man. And then in some part of their description, similar to the Jewish organization, they talked about helping people connect to their roots, their Hispanic roots. And we already know we have brothers and sisters uh, with Hispanic background, but we also know that there is a, a situation sometimes with some Hispanics and African people, right? So I'm pretty sure that brothers and sisters benefit from this community as well. But naturally, the people who are going to benefit the most are certain Hispanic. To be honest, a lot of people with Hispanic background as well have shown to be just as racist as other people and even more racist. So we have to be careful with that because the people who are going to be traumatized are our youths. But we know for a fact that our youths are going to be okay if we have control of our situation. How is it that most of these organizations, if not all, who receive some portion of the $20 million are all European organizations? How is it that none of them are African organizations? How is it that none of them are for the African people coming from the Caribbean and so forth? Is it because we fail to come together and create an organization and then go to the government and request some money? I don't know. So I can't even say anything about the government until I know for sure that that is the case. I think it's hard to believe that we don't have any, but I can be wrong. So if you're from New York and you understand what is going on here, if you have some type of intel on what is happening here, uh, feel free to let us know what is going on. 